All right, we're back. We're back with part three of the Minecrafters bee breeding tutorials. Um, this is going to be a fun tutorial because we're going to go over a lot of extra stuff, stuff that you may not need in your quest for dominance to becoming the master bee breeder. Um, we're going to talk about frames. There's a lot of them. We're going to talk about the Apiarist suit, the habitat locator, Apiarist data bank, the analyzer, and the escritoire. And at the end of the episode, we're going to breed all the way up to Imperial or Industrious, right on camera so I can show you how it's done. If for some reason the last episode didn't explain it well enough. Let's go ahead over here into this little dungeon, little tower of the castle, and I'm going to nail down all these frames very quickly for you, um, so pay attention. We've already talked about the untreated, impregnated, and proven frame. They all increase the productivity of the bees by 20% each, um, and those are really basic frames. So let's nail all these other ones real quick. All right, soul frames will give you a plus 50% mutation chance while decreasing the lifespan of a bee by 75%. Chocolate frames will increase production by 50% and reduce the lifespan of the bee by 50%. Healing frames will increase the lifespan of the bee by 50% while reducing productivity by 25% and it also gives you a minus 50% mutation chance. Nova frames reduce the lifespan by about, or reduce the lifespan of the bee to about 25 seconds, and they are not craftable. It's a creative mode only item. Restraint frames will decrease the lifespan of bees by 25%, and the production um, by 25% as well. And uh, this will reduce the effect range that the bees have. So if you have negative effects like creeper, um, or poison or something like that. You can put those frames in there and they'll decrease the range at which you'll get poisoned at and stuff. Um, basically, it's a pretty useless frame. Gentle frames increase the lifespan of bees by 50% while increasing productivity by 40% and still yet increasing or decreasing the mutation chance by 30% and they're extremely weak frames. Magic frames double productivity and have a good durability. Metabolic frames have a uh, plus 80% mutation chance and a plus 20 percent productivity chance they're very weak and they cause a lot of damage uh, to the environment as far as magic damage like flux necrotic actually all these cause a little bit of uh, flux and so on and so forth and bad things happen um, necrotic frames decrease the lifespan of the bee by 70 percent while decreasing the productivity by 25 percent as well that'll give you a really high turnaround rate on your bees Resilient frames double the productivity and are um, a really strong frame. Uh, actually, that's probably the strongest frame of all of them. Um, temporal frames will increase the lifespan of a bee by 150%, uh, but they do have a really weak durability. Oblivion frames will reduce the lifespan to 27 seconds, and uh, you only need to put one of these in an apiary, uh, whatever bee house you're using at a time. They're very, very weak and they cause a lot of damage to the environment as far as flux. So that's all the different frames that we have here. Now let's go ahead and talk about some extra stuff. I do have the... Uh, oh, no, I took it off. We're going to talk about the Apiris suit next, and this is going to require uh, one more bee, and I think I mentioned this earlier. If I didn't, I'm sorry. It's the Tropical Drone, found like this, and the Tropical Drone is going to drop a stringy comb which in turn is going to drop something called silky wisp if my computer would hurry up or propolis here that's what you need yeah, and it has a chance to centrifuge oh silky propolis that's what you need it has a chance to centrifuge into propolis and that's going to be important later so remember the screen uh, silky combs, I'm sorry, comes from, yeah, they come from tropical bees. Okay, I knew that. Anyways, you're going to need that silky wisp to make the apiarist suit. And we're not actually going to make one. I'm just going to show you how to make one. It's basically um, woven silk in the normal armor patterns to make all of these different things here. And what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to take nine silk wisps, put it in a carpenter with, along with some water, and you're going to make some woven silk and this takes a while to get if you don't have a lot of tropical bees but it's not actually necessary I've never been able to or never bothered to even get this um, apiarist suit and basically what it does is it negates the negative effects 
um, that some of those bees have. So if you're afraid of blowing up because you got too close of close to your uh, austere beehive, then uh, you just make one of these suits and you'll be fine. But it's not necessarily needed. Um, the same goes for just about everything we'll talk about in this episode. The habitat locator, let's take a look at that. It is a fairly simple tool. Um, it's going to just use some redstone, some bronze, and it's basically going to do something very, very simple. If we go ahead and take one of these in our inventory, and we go ahead and also get a, let's get a drone, we'll get a, a forest drone. You can take the habitat locator along with some honey. Actually, I actually have honey right down here. Take some honey out. Put some honey up there in the top slot. Put your bee here. It'll analyze it to pacify it, and you can just see which habitats this bee will uh, reproduce in. So it's a pretty neat little tool. Again, there's so many different ways that you can find this out that this is, is not really something that you absolutely need, and it's a fairly explanatory um, little tool in itself. Next, we have the Apiris Data Bank, and let's go ahead and look how to make this. There's three different forms of this. There's the Master Apiris Data Bank, and basically, this is not something that you can actually make in uh, survival mode. You have to spawn this in, but it will tell you all the breeding uh, combinations and so on and so forth, and all the information about every bee. This is the one that you're actually going to be able to make, and I'm going to take each one of these here real quick. Uh, if we look at the Apiris data bank, basically this is a handheld version of the um, this block here. It's going to require some gold, tin, redstone, a diamond, uh, villager emerald, inside a carpenter along with some water and you'll be able to make this data bank and to make the um, standalone version or the, the stationary version you're going to need to make uh, an Apiris data bank, some glass, some redstone and this thing called an Apiris machine and these are going to be important later on when we get into genetics but it's just a sturdy casing, some copper and some redstone to make that right there. So what does this thing do? Well besides crashing uh, my, my client a lot this gives you some fairly useful information not necessarily needed information, um, but there are some cool things that you can do with this. Let's hope I can click on this without blowing my game up. Yep, and I did. What this basically does is as you discover species or as you acquire species and bring them into your inventory, and you can see I've spawned in a few of them here, um, it will start acquiring information about all these. So if I select the forest bee over here and then click on these tabs that just are tabs with no indication of anything, um, it's going to tell me and it's a forest bee, it's one of the most common pests in the forest, mostly docile, yada yada yada. Um, it's got all this crap here, don't need to know about it really. Genome, I don't know anything about that yet. Um, it's going to say it's going to produce honey every uh, 5.1 minutes, and we did talk about that er earlier in a previous episode, about how we can tell how often these things produce. It's going to tell you the um, climate that this bee can survive in, and this is extra biomes, makes this thing ridiculous looking. But mainly, we got the regular ones up here. There's some, yeah, thin pasture. Okay, those are extra biomes. But anyways, um, it's going to tell you the climate that it can survive in, too. And it's, it prefers a normal climate and normal humidity. That's the bottom one here. And uh, depending on the bee, the climate or humidity will be way up top or, or way down low. Let's say if we get a, let's pick up a modest princess here and check her out. Or oh, actually, there we go. I can just select modest here. And we'll go to climate. You see how this prefers, um, it can survive in hellish, hot, or warm. And it's going to require a lot of, or not very much humidity at all to live in. And it will tell you the biomes as well. Um, resultant mutations and further mutations. I really always hesitate to click on these because it's this is what makes it crash. But I'm going to do it anyway. It's not telling me. Let's try forest. Further mutations. Okay. Uh, mousing over these causes damage a lot too, but you can see here that this is telling me the, the mutations that I have discovered myself. So you can see on the top there, the forest drone bred with the meadows is going to give me a common. Um, down a little bit farther, you can see that a common with a, a forest drone or a mundane bee will give you a cultivated bee and so on and so forth. Um, so there's some pretty in interesting information in here. Again, it's a little bit overkill, don't necessarily need it, um, but there are a few other things that are pretty cool in here. Let's go to, um, let's check out industrious, and this is the branches. Um, this just tells you that it goes diligent, unweary, then industrious. Basically what I just put on that chart for you in the last episode. Um, and uh, you can see all these bees here, the noble line, noble majestic, and I haven't got imperial bees yet in this server. 
um, or in this single player world. So it doesn't show me that yet. But once you acquire all this stuff, um, it'll just give you more information. This will give me my profile. It's telling me that I'm a beast water. And as you discover more species and branches, um, you will gain repoir. Um, and it'll tell you how many species that you have discovered. This is empty. Don't know why. Okay. And here we go back to the beginning here. So that's that's a pretty cool block just to look at. Again, you don't need it. It's just an extra. And the same thing with the Apiris data bank. Let's take a look at the analyzer now. This is a is a, it's a fairly neat block. And what you can do is you can kind of automate the um, analyzation of your bees if you don't want to use a bealyzer, and you kind of want to have this the system take care of it on its own. It's a slightly more costly, more time-consuming way to analyze a bee. Um, it's going to um, need liquid honey to work, and I have just taken some honey capsules here, and you get liquid honey by running um, honey drops through a ooh, not one of those by running honey drops through a squeezer okay and you have a chance to get propolis again this way too and we're going to need that in the next episode for the automation part okay so it's fairly simple squeeze some honey put it through here fill it up i've got a big tank full of honey and so the analyzer will analyze your bees at the cost of some honey and you can automate this and we'll talk about that in the next episode it's an okay block not too bad a little bit slow though all right let's take a look at this escritoire all right, now this is a really unique block and maybe one that you've never heard of or maybe you've seen it in NEI and just never thought to build it before like I did until one day. I built this block and it's fairly simple to build. All you need is some wood planks inside a carpenter with some seed oil. It's going to take a little time and you're going to get this escritoire. Now, you open it up and this looks like a complicated disaster, but it's really not. And before you make this thing or after you make it, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get a bunch of honeycombs and some paper. Uh, what this is basically is a mini game and it's uh, most closely resembles memory and what you have to do is you have to take a bee, so we're going to take this common bee and put it in the question mark slot there. It's going to tell you a little something something up here. I'm going to take this out here and uh, it's going to free up some slots over here so we can see if there's no bee, there's no available slots and if there is a bee we have two slots available. And the reason why you're going to need paper is um, because the end result of this process is going to give you something. It's going to be pretty cool what it gives you. The reason why you need honeycombs is because a lot of times this is really hard to guess. And without honeycombs, there's just no possible way you could do the harder bees. So I'm going to turn over this book by clicking on it. And I'm going to find that it's a caffeinated drone. Okay. I'm going to click another one. Oh, I got a forlorn drone. Once you click and miss or guess wrong, you got to start over. So take the bee out, put it back in. We're going to get a spectral, frugal, nope, bauxite, nope. Actually, bauxite might not even work in this because there's no Greg Tech. Um, ashen drone, corrosive drone. You see how hard of this this is just for basic bees. So you really don't want to. Um, yeah, see, I messed up. You really don't want to just stand here all day and try to guess this stuff because half the time it's not really worth the outcome. However, honey or honeycombs significantly helps you out here. Okay, I put two pieces of honey there and it showed me that there's a magma drone and a quantum drone here. So let's say I click here, quantum. Now I know there's a quantum drone there. Bam. Okay, made a match. Let's click over here. A vis drone. Now it can only be either here or here. Yeah. All right, so we got magma and magma. And once you beat this little mini game, it's going to give you a piece of paper and it's going to give you maybe some of your honey back. So let's see what this paper says. Put it up here. It says Captain Jack's notes, mutation discovered, common and wintry. So we know that those are or one of them's a a mundane bee, the wintry bee is, and common is like a tier 2 bee. And we know that if we breed a common and a mundane bee together, that we're going to get cultivated. So this is not really telling us anything new. However, it will give us some unique information. Let's take this out here and let's right click and it's going to memorize these notes for us. And what it does is it allows you to go back into this Apiris data bank and it will open up or it will reveal um, that that common and wintry drone together will make a cultivated drone. So it's going to add to your data bank the more and more that you learn from this thing. Now, let's, for instance, take um, 
let's take a my favorite bees radioactive bees let's see what happens when we put a real high tier bee inside of here wow okay now you have to match every single one of these and not miss at all okay so let's load this thing oh, let's put the radioactive bee back in let's load that thing with honey and it's going to tell me that this is enough store or whatever that is drunk okay so we got that right so let's put some more honey in here okay it's going to tell us that there's a sodalite and a galvanized drone over here and uh yikes want to keep going here it's going to tell us that there's a saffron and forlorn oh but only give us one Okay, so you see how this can get really complicated, and you basically have to start writing stuff down, um, unless you have an extremely good memory, to get the notes from these bees. And it's going to tell you how many attempts it takes. And this is going to consume a lot of honeycomb, so I wouldn't actually recommend this, um, or doing this very very early. There we go, it got galvanized. I've never actually done uh, this high of a tier. Sodalite and saffron, I don't think we've seen a saffron before. Nah, crap. Okay. Anyways, you get the point. This is a really neat block. It'll give you some research notes and it'll add it to the Apiris data bank. Okay. All right. Let's get to it. We are going to breed some bees together. Um, I just want to let you know right off the bat that we are going to be using an alviary, uh, two alviaries actually. And this is for demonstration purposes only. I'm not really going to show you what these look like, even though it's kind of obvious. Um, and they're going to have a lot of mutators inside of them to force mutations so I can breed through these really quick. But this is only so I can show you how to get to those high tier bees, the industrious and the imperial bees. All right, so let's go ahead and grab some of our drones that we've already have stashed away here. So we have a Meadows Princess. This one's a purebred. That's what we want. Um, let's get a forest drone to breed with it. And let's get a Forest Princess Purebred and a Meadows Drone Purebred. All right, and let's see what happens. All right, so let's go ahead and put our uh, Meadows, and that's a Purebred, with a Forest Purebred. Then we're going to go over here and we're going to put our Forest Purebred with a Meadows Purebred. Now you remember that two mundane bees uh, bred together have a chance to equal, or, uh, come out to be a common bee and because of the way I have this set up there should be an almost 100% chance that I'm going to get all common bees which should be very nice so uh, let's see what the result mutations are oh isn't this exciting there we go common common we're always going to bealize everything to make sure it's purebred or the um, things that, I, that we want. So these are common purebreds, and these should also be common purebreds. So let's take a look at these. Okay. Common, common. Common, common. Awesome, awesome. All right. So now what do we need to do? We need to breed common back with mundane bees. So let's go ahead and grab another mundane bee. We'll grab a, uh, a forest drone. And we'll actually do it with two forest drones. There we go. So we're going to put a common with a mundane common with a mundane and what we're going to hope for is we're going to hope for a cultivated drone which is going to be purple because a common uh, bred with a mundane is going to give us cultivated all right let's see what we get dun 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 Let's go. Let's go. There we go. Cultivated. All right. Again, there is no possible way under the sun that this would ever happen this fast. I understand that uh, with the regular apiary. And you can't even get this alviary until you have these bees that we're going for right now. So keep that in mind. All right. Cultivated. What do we breed cultivated with? Common. That's right. I'll give you a second to answer. All right, so we're going to put the cultivated drone, make sure it's purebred, back with the common purebred. There we go. Now, 
something really bad is very likely to happen right here. And what that is, is that this line splits off into the industrious and into the imperial line. And a common bred with a cultivated has a chance to either become a diligent or a noble bee. And what usually <laughs> happens here is exactly what just happened. We get a little bit of both. We really don't want that, but we're going to live with it. Oh, look at that. Okay. Now, if you don't bealize at this point, you're really going to shoot yourself in the foot. We got really lucky here. We got a purebred diligent princess. We got a noble diligent hybrid. E, not so sure about that one. Another hybrid. Please don't be hybrid. Okay, we got a diligent noble hybrid. Diligent, diligent hybrid. A diligent noble hybrid. Okay, so I'm going to explain to you my thought process behind um, the breeding of these bees. We have a diligent princess, which is awesome. And just like uh, we explained before, we're going to have to go back one generation and breed the diligent princess with a cultivated drone. And uh, there's a really good chance that's going to become a green unweary drone there. But this is where it gets a little bit tricky. This diligent noble hybrid still has a chance to become a couple things. So I'm going to put this in here and I'm going to put the cultivated in. But the outcome of this um, pair is not going to be certain. This could turn back into a cultivated. It could turn into a noble the noble bees, diligent bees. Um, it could turn into unweary bees. It's really, really, really hard to tell. But what I'm hoping is that we're going to get majestic bees out of that um, so that we can get both lines here. Okay, Here's these green unweary drones like I was hoping for. They are going to be purebred bees, so unweary drones. And unweary drones need to be bred with that's right, diligent. So we're going to put unweary and diligent together, and this should actually get us all the way up to the industrious line. Here we go. Awesome. Awesome. This is better than I could have possibly expected or hoped for. Um, actually, it's not quite what I hope for because <laughs> majestic and unweary. Unweary is the tier right before industrious, and majestic is the tier right before um, what's it called? Ooh, this is bad. Okay, well, at the very least, we bred all the way up to industrious. So let's check these babies out. We got industrious, industrious. So these are going to be some awesome bees. And they are purebreds. And if we bealize them one more time and take a look at some of the traits down here, pollen, that's what that is, and that's what we're going to need to make these alviaries. So I'm going to go ahead and um, try to produce some pollen in that there. And we're going to take and we're going to do something really dangerous. We're going to put this unweary drone, this majestic unweary, in with a noble diligent. This is four different traits, and this is going to cause one of those disasters that I explained about um, in that little grid over there. So... Let's find out what the result of this mess is. All right. I mean, if I'm seriously lucky, I'm going to get majestic. And there's there is a chance because of the mutation um, enhancers and modifiers that I have inside here, which is why these are so cool. I can't wait to get to these, but we got a couple more episodes to go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, so as expected, I did not get the majestic line so we got unweary and diligent so basically what happened is we we completely lost the majestic line and if I was to go ahead and take let's see we got all the way up to majestic let's see if we have a purebred majestic here we do not what I'm going to do is go ahead and because we got this far we're going to get a majestic princess we're going to breed it back with a, a noble drone. That's why it's good to, to pause, breed a bunch of drones once you get some purebreds, um, put a bunch of drones together, get a, get a bunch of them going, um, and uh, 
make sure you have a lot so you can keep reading if something messes up, just like what happened with us. But we were lucky enough to get an industrious drone. Um, because of the frame setup I have in here, it's unlikely that I'll get a pollen. But I'm going to go ahead and try for it anyway. We're going to see this imperial bee um, come out right now. And we're going to have bread to the end of the two lines. And then we're going to end the episode there. I hope this was fairly self-explanatory. I know sometimes it's it's easier to learn by um, some, by just watching somebody. There we go. We have our Imperial Princess. That's highly fertile. I got four drones. That is an awesome trait. Um, that is the highest fertility level. I don't know how that even happened. <laughs> Seth only said it was two. Um, unless there was some still sitting in there that I just forgot about. Okay. Uh, but there we go. We have our Industrious. We have our Imperial Queens. And once we have these two queens, we're going to start mass producing their byproducts, which are royal jelly and pollen. All right. Um, and we're going to learn how to do that in the next episode, coincidentally. All right. This has been Captain Jack with uh, episode three of our bee breeding tutorial series. Make sure you check out all of our social media outlets listed here. And as always, guys, stay poised.